Buonasera ragazze e ragazzi. My name is Harv. Uh, I come originally from South Africa. I'm sorry for my English, but uh, my Italian is not so very good. Uh, um, what I would like to talk tonight about is uh, an initiative that is uh, in a way on a sort of European level uh, for many different circles in a, in a, in a techie or a hacking uh, 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 layers of society, uh, also some bureaucratic and industrial um, way of, of uh, new thinking. First of all, uh, I would like to um, introduce a little speech uh, that uh, is going to be shown at a later point. And this is from Marian uh, Kamphaus, as a friend of ours that is uh, unfortunately missing in Norway still. Uh, declared officially dead, but uh, nobody found any trace of him. He was a security expert and uh, he was one of the, he was one of the uh, uh, people who trained journalists in uh, security encryption and uh, safety and private protection of data. Um, so this is what he has to say uh, about the need to create a European-wide, uh, European-engineered uh, security device or a new generation laptop uh, that can be used uh, from, let's say, uh, 10 years old children up to 99 year old uh, 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 grandfather. So this is what he has to say and we, I show you later what uh, the whole project is about. There must be some sound or? There is light at the end of the tunnel and that's what we need to work on. So we know it works. We need strong crypto systems, and we need new kinds of computers that are built in Europe for us, ideally by us, as close as possible to us, on sort of the open source philosophy where the computer you own and that is in your home or in the hospital you visit is accountable to you as an end user, not to some American commercial company and or the NSA. Now, it may seem like a big task to start using a completely new computer that today doesn't even exist yet and that you've never seen and that you've never used. But I'm absolutely certain that all of you can use, learn to use this new computer. Because you all have one of these, um, and they didn't exist 10 years ago, and you're all using those, and nobody got a special course in it. So it's completely obvious that you all can learn to use a new computer that didn't exist 10 years ago, because you already did it. So never underestimate your ability to learn new things when it comes to things like computers or many other areas. Now, some people might say, well, if we have all these new computers that are different from the other ones, then it won't work with all the other stuff. And I call BS on that. And my proof is the internet, which is billions of computers produced by tens of thousands of different companies, and it all works together. Why? Because of open standards, like a common language that makes everything talk to each other, even if different parties make it. Now, for the techies, I know the internet really looks like this, but let's keep that between us. <laughs> so, Okay, so uh, what Arian was saying is that we need a shift in the paradigm in order to uh, create a new computer or a new laptop as a, as a, as a way to circumvent uh, mass surveillance and, uh, and basically data theft and uh, uh, disseminating data to a big companies that are actually making money out of it. So uh, after the speech that was, uh, that was held in 2018 uh, or, or uh, 17, I think, or something, uh, lots of people start thinking about it and we kind of came out uh, with, a, with, a, with the project that is called uh, Balthazar. And uh, that's a one a laptop for the new internet. Idea is to build a new laptop, and also idea is to build a new internet as uh, as as a underneath an underneath layer that is going to uh, uh, kind of uh, enable end user to be able to protect uh, his own data and actually own them in a, in a very sophisticated way. Also, it's a new way of approach uh, of designing stuff uh, for people who don't know me, and that's possibly. 99% of you. Uh, I used to work for Lego. I'm, uh, I used to be a software producer for Lego. I designed uh, Lego Mindstorms uh, uh, software for uh, graphical user programming for robotic uh, interaction with children. So basically it is a toy for, but it has been used in engineering, it has been used in NASA, in ESA, 
as a prototyping device, as a toy, because it has uh, uh, robotic abilities of sensing and uh, actuating stuff. So also lots of people simulated or companies simulated the production uh, lines uh, by using uh, simple Lego Mindstorms computers to actually show investors or, or actually improve their pro pro production process or the over overall economy in, in their companies in various ways, also from NASA and stuff like that. I'm also one of the initiators of a Google Science Fair that uh, uh, used to be, uh, it still is, uh, quite actual um, initiative that is uh, uh, done by Scientific American, National Geographic, Lego and Google and SpaceX. So uh, these five companies are giving uh, rewards to young scientists who are uh, all from all over the world who have a right to participate and do interesting projects with uh, uh, using um, things. So um, we came out with an idea that uh, we have uh, uh, devised sort of uh, one laptop for the new internet, which is uh, basically 13.3 inches uh, screen diameter a laptop uh, that is inspired by EOMA 68 and this is a new standard for embedded open architecture, modular architecture. Uh, it's powered by RISC-V processor, uh, multi-core and it runs on Linux OS. It's basically designed for TriSQL, Ubuntu and Debian uh, with absolutely open, no proprietary firmware or drivers or anything like that. Um, uh, we have a default low security layer that lays out down in, uh, in a certain firmware that we have to have as uh, RISC-V has to have in its own uh, uh, um, ISA, so open uh, uh, software architecture. Uh, it has to have, uh, it's based on Libre Swan or uh, as it's known in techie circuits as, uh, circuits as uh, IPsec or uh, uh, IP Swan, and it's envisaged to be GNUnet ready. GNUnet is also new internet layer that is going to be one day finished, hopefully, uh, which will have and contain all the all the uh, protocols that uh, will be uh, that that will enable you as an end user to really control your data and be able to uh, have uh, have complete privacy and and sort of security on the internet and feel comfortable about it, not being uh, forced to uh, things. So this, uh, this architecture is, um, uh, we follow uh, GNU GPL, uh, FOSS, uh, EOMA, ESA and even CC guidelines, which means uh, we, we also want to open it fully. So this is kind of an artist uh, impression of it. Uh, there are a few design paradigms that we want to shift and change. Uh, what we have here is uh, we shifted the uh, uh, touchpad above the keyboard, putting speakers. It's a, just a rough sketch sort of um, that I made a few days ago uh, or, or weeks. Um, we have a removable USB dongle that is going to be hardware encrypted into motherboard and uh, RISC-V, uh, so main processing core or cores and graphical and uh, RAM is going to be on a separate PCI card. So e Express PCI or PCMCI as you know it. So in that format you will be able to take out this card, put it in your pocket and the computer is basically unhackable because there is no computer. It's just uh, a motherboard, naked motherboard with uh, hardware uh, PCB for hardware and uh, for keyboard and for, for peripherals. Um, also we have a camera that is going to be modular meaning that it's going to be removable, so you can remove your camera and uh, put something else on it. Um, idea is uh, not, of, of course, idea is to help uh, even more paranoid people <laughs> about their security, but idea is also to kind of create an uh, ecosystem where other people can create tech that will connect to our stuff, so you can create your own camera, design it, and uh, perhaps do some infrared or whatever you like uh, uh, there. Um, Another feature of this security is that it has the four hardware switches, so not magnetic, but really hardware. And this is Wi-Fi, this is speakers, this is microphone, and this is also a, a volume knob that it has a, a click 
Uh, so it's a, a round volume knob that you can really switch off, and when you switch it off, you really know that you switch it off. So it's a round potentiometer that I will talk about it later on in a, in a spec. So basically, what are our goals? Uh, our goals are, uh, so mission is to be, to enable you people to, uh, to run open source, so it's going to be completely open architecture available to everybody. Uh, um, some blueprints will show up uh, on this website very soon. Uh, so our idea was to design open, secure, inexpensive and innovative hardware uh, with the usage of already existing. So we're not going to make software for it, we're just going to make a laptop and you people or whoever uh, is going to make a software for it. But uh, we we do it with uh, certain recommendations and this is if you if you follow what we say or our recipe this is going to work for you otherwise uh we cannot guarantee that it's going to run fedora or zuse or some other version of linux in or freebsd or whatever um so basically what we want to achieve uh and i show you later on in specifications or dimensions uh, uh why we do that is we want to sort of gently massage uh, big companies like uh, NVIDIA that we talk uh, to a lot uh, uh, with them uh, into into respecting open source as uh, or opening their documentation for GPU uh, and their innovative GPUs uh, uh, because I th uh, they should be led to believe that uh, 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 this is going to improve their products and they're going to sell them more because idea uh, it's still within the management of NVIDIA and all other big companies same like even uh, even uh, 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 ARM is uh, yeah we keep our we keep our products uh, closed source as is case in Raspbian or Ras Raspberry Pi uh, 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 we keep our products uh, 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 and documentation for it and some drivers closed source because it's it can do us economical damage if somebody copies us which is absolutely not true because that shows that they really don't understand what open source means. So we, we try to work with the big companies in order to 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 talk to to talk them into opening complete documentation so we can write drivers and we can have open source uh, stable environment where which we can rely on. Therefore, lots of people are going to buy stuff from them. So that's kind of more or less marketing technical issue with people who are running uh, in uh, in high levels of company not understanding really technology and what does it mean to have an open source um, idea. Um, also this laptop is going to be priced about 300 euros. So we want to have uh, 300 euros very powerful graphic and uh, uh, computing machine uh, with lots of memory, uh, the best best balance between memory and processing power so that we can enable and low income individuals and communities to be uh, to, to make something affordable because uh, a cost of such computer is well below 100 euros even including a very high uh, high-end screen so we don't see reason why our manufacturing or MPC uh, um, as you say in economy or in trend uh, so manufacturing production costs should be uh, why price should be higher than three times because if you make something for 100 euros, you need 100 euros to make tax and cover all your stuff, and 100 euros is a profit. Out of this profit, we plan, that is an idea, uh, to give money or to support as with donations people who write software for the computer. So it's a kind of a closed circle economy. <coughs> and we recognize that this guy or this group or this organization is working something with this computer, so they're developing it or writing applications. Uh, we are going to, uh, to to give them a donation one time or two times or whatever it's needed uh, as much as of course we can uh, to kind of so stimulate and motivate uh, and give it back to the community who supports the the hardware so that is a so it's it's not a profit driven but it is uh, it is a community driven issue uh, also we want to do um, kind of eco friendly point point is with this computer that if you take out the card and if you have your processing unit on a PMC, in a PCMCI uh, uh, format, you can upgrade it very easy. You just buy another card with a better chip and more memory and better graphics, and you have you don't have to change your keyboard, your screen, your stuff. You just have to change a, 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 a processing unit, so a, a card. And also taking card out makes it really unhackable. So that's that's kind of security point there. Um, 
So basically, uh, also is uh, to make a modular and granulated product, meaning that you have to uh, you have to be able to. Of course, it gives you right to you own it, you repair it, you do whatever you want with it, and you can also multiply it so produce it or if you have idea how to do that. Um, uh, our so far expertise, knowledge, and research has shown that Risk Five is a way to go for us, uh, and uh, it can create a potential uh, secure uh, among security community. It creates a very big potential also in the processing power and and the way how it handles its instruction sets and uh, and uh, 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 in general how it uh, at the moment um, we aim at. Uh, 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 C5, uh, Series 7, that's uh, 8 core, 2, two gigahertz uh, RISC V uh, uh, system on the module with uh, uh, NVIDIA card. We also look in Mali, so in an ARM direction in Mali 400 series, which is really good for 3D and video, so it's a kind of very high power for low price and also consumes a lot, uh, lot less uh, battery power. But we have still some issues with some drivers and some sort of uh, 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 level, uh, low level uh, firmware and um, because some of it is uh, applied also in another platforms of ARM so it's a kind of still under negotiation how we are going to do that and what for what really we are going to decide. Um, our idea is also to position it and um, as a as educational platform meaning that um, let's say uh, it can be also used in schools because if we don't use it in schools you cannot teach further generations of the children or people who are going to be like we are today uh, uh, kind of interesting or at the edge of some sort of technologies that are that are improving all overall computing experience uh, if you don't teach them in the schools from the early age let's say nine that's why we wrote uh, uh, 9 to 99, because I believe that uh, it appeals to everybody. Uh, so basically what we, uh, what we thought about is I, I, gave a, I can give you some example about uh, of people ask frequently asked questions. So I can always say, uh, like, who is this for? It is for an average uh, basic internet user that requires some default uh, uh, security and develops a certain awareness. Basically, what Arian said, 10 years ago there were no mobile phones, nobody no knew how to use them, but in 10 years we learned how to use them and now we are using them really well. So, same with, uh, with, it, with this device. Um, we also want to enable advanced computer users because if you mention hacker within European Commission or whatever, they immediately change the face. But if you say it's an advanced computer user, which is a more diplomatic word for the same, uh, they like it and they say, fine, do that, we like it. Uh, so basically, advanced computer users, journalists, governmental and public institution workers that need secure hardware and software features that enable them to basically use encryption, apply encryption, be secure and feel secure about in their own environment. So not not being a, a thing. Another thing why we use this uh, non-existing USB dongle or existing but you dongle that you can take out. No USB you cannot stick anything in. So if there is no USB there, it's in your pocket and it's hardware wired to your hardware. Um, uh, um, later on mounts on FS tab as, as in Linux. Uh, does mount devices, external devices, but that's another story. Uh, if there is nothing to plug in USB, your computer is pretty safe. So that's default uh, default security by by basically not having st uh, a feature. Um, and then we have um, educational institutions, meaning schools, STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, which is very popular in states. It gets more popular in uh, in in England and gets more popular in kind of uh, Anglo-Saxon world. Um, and then we have a, a, a question, okay, so we have lots of laptops and uh, so why, why yet another laptop, you know, and it's, I say, today laptops are really expensive, if you really want to buy a secure laptop, it costs you 1500 euros plus, uh, there are some good examples or good practice out of there, they don't differ very much in design, they have some magnetic switches, and they say, and, they, and then they tie you to a certain software and say our software is very secure, 
so buy our computer with our software and this is not what we want to do that's maybe way for some companies or some individuals or initiatives but that's not what we want to do we want to create a device where you can create secure environment in software for it and also add hardware as you like um, but then people ask okay so i have already chromebook and uh, picture book or whatnot this kind of uh, netbook uh, uh, format like a small laptop yes you have it's true but they have no security features and chromebooks are basically called data uh, collecting devices because they work on internet only so you need connection and connectivity in order to do something with that computer without network chromebook is pretty useless regardless of the hardware it has and they don't really meet the features uh, and they have actually non-security features at all so everything you do is basically used and abused by by big corporations or companies that are actually doing it so um, that's one uh, let's say question and answer to to it and uh, so lots of people ask us also so okay so what do you really want and our idea and answer is uh, okay so what you want to uh, enable and support low income and communities lo low income individuals and communities uh, all over the planet so not not like OLPC where OLPC was aimed at, as in Africa so sort of uh, oh we are going to make a computer for new developing countries so they can learn and catch up with us which was a completely wrong idea because uh, idea of uh, 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 it's maybe somebody else's understanding of the world how it was 10 years ago but things radically changed and uh, Africa is digitized as any other country in the world so or any other developing country has been digitized far sooner and not thanks to uh, uh, initiatives from academics and and uh, re re let's say MIT or Berkeley or, or Stanford or such institutions but it has been done by default caught up and people use electronic banking uh, uh, in, in, in and, and all kind of other features that we have uh, actually more than we use in Europe so it's a little bit discrepancy here and there um, so what uh, what we want to achieve is that uh, that people are aware what they are doing with their data so this is I think very important in uh, as as an issue of, of uh, 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 like 10 years ago you were not be a, you didn't know how to buy stuff on internet you said okay so I have to click here and then I have to put my credit card number do I really want that it was kind of dodgy so you didn't feel comfortable about it but now you do because you have all kind of encryption and guarantees and and basically a, a proportion of uh, uh, online crime and stolen numbers and passwords and security numbers and whatnot uh, is not really that high as 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 it could be 10 years ago if people uh, uh, were brave enough to go and go for it so people developed some sort of certain systems um, so why children should want one or, or why um, I think education is a very important uh, part of everybody's life and um, if you create an affordable device that is not so expensive but it has lots of good features and it's very high-end for very low money uh, educational institutions in even in developed worlds like uh, West West part of a planet let's say or or uh, global north or whatever you say it, it's a uh, or global west it's still expensive for a school to fork out uh, 20 computers or 200 computers but if if they have a certain price point and I know it from experience from Mindstorms that has a price point of 300 euros they can afford it and you know they they, they multiple use it they use it in different classrooms on different levels so we thought we said uh, okay so uh, if we do that Mm, how we do this uh, with education so how do we do education in privacy security and general data protection in schools uh, high and higher educational institutions for that we create activities you know sort of um, um, uh, humans are social animals and we like to connect to other humans same like insects same like robots and uh, uh, we like to talk and share that's what we are and um, so having that in mind uh, we thought okay this is these are activities that we can do so we envisage a couple of scenarios where we could uh, perhaps uh, uh, put ourselves in um, 
in, uh, in, in one uh, environment uh, where different scenarios could be explained, uh, users as illustrated to show what is at stake uh, in, a, in a classroom. For example, you can have a, a teacher is monitoring students and their activities. So basically, every laptop is connected to a, to a teacher that is monitoring what their what her students are doing, and um, it's a feature that is called classroom control in a trusted network environment. Meaning that sysadmin of a school can guarantee with such uh, device and uh, device actually running Linux can guarantee and easily set up trusted networking environment so that you have a classroom control uh, completely secure and all the data and marks and uh, behavior and characteristics of your pupils and, and students could be retained within this uh, um, network, closed network or, or controlled network even if it's, if it's uh, uh, open towards outside. Then we have um, sort of a scenario where young users um, are on the street uh, in a public area and they are in basically untrusted network environment because they can connect to public Wi-Fi, they can connect uh, to all kinds of networks that are around them. And so how do you approach to this problem? So how do you protect children in, in sort of uh, playing with robots, being on the street and uh, they are in an uh, untrusted network environment? So for that we can create uh, lots of different uh, and very interesting uh, educational activities where we can show examples what happens to your data, you know, like all kind of um, network tools that we are networking tools that we are using actually to 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 monitor um, traffic. And then we have after school activities that are performed in the city parks where there is no network, um, so local network can be made on an access point and it can be set on anybody's mobile device. Uh, you just say hotspot and uh, you switch it on and everybody connects to it and basically uh, in such environment uh, uh, with ordinary laptops uh, or, or let's say uh, devices you have no uh, no really overview what goes and where your data is going to whom is connecting and whatnot. So this is one of the scenarios where we can um, envisage uh, thing. Another thing that we want to introduce in, uh, in education, so that is because that's I think a good start, um, is um, mm, mm, let's say, I'm sorry here, um, operating environment. So we can recommend the windowing which is called uh, uh, up aperture operating system or environment that is basically a windowing system where uh, children have to achieve a certain tasks in order to so that operating system or actually windowing environment because operating system is uh, based on Linux anyway uh, uh, any of these three distributions so that they can they can uh, um, progress so uh, uh, the, the, uh, more possibilities open up it's like in a game you start with the first level and you end up level 59 level 59 gives you lots of lots of options in the game, let's say, or weapons or abilities or magic or whatnot. But in, in this kind of uh, environment, so it would be, would be um, sort of a software concept to have it uh, also modul modularized in, uh, in, in task and environment. So what we have today is, uh, so it's a sort of auto-parental control. Child controls its own uh, habits and uh, uh, in order to achieve more and see more and learn more has to finish a certain tasks. So these are. I'm just giving this an example of how we can teach security to, to younger generations, basically your kids and my kids and uh, everybody else's kids. But to come back to the things that might interest you maybe more uh, about it, it's um, it's a perhaps specifications. To come back. So we envisaged uh, we envisaged uh, Tresquel, uh, Balthazar as as uh, Balthazar. Is, uh, there, there are three things why it's called Balthazar. Balthazar was one of these three uh, holy kings, uh, uh, Balthazar, Mel Melchior, and uh, what was the third one? BCM, uh, whatever. Uh, you usually have it, uh, for, for Christian people, you usually have it written uh, every year on the uh, top of the house. BCM, uh, Caspar Melchior, Balthazar Caspar Melchior, and Balthazar was mag, so magician. He was the only one to be able to hide stuff and uh, and create things that are invisible. So that is one. Another one is a cartoon called Professor Balthazar that is kind of really funny uh, 70s um, East European uh, uh, cartoon about the professor who solves all kinds of problems without aggression but through sort of uh, talking to a machine or 
thinking a lot and then pushing only one lever and the problem the drop comes out and he solves the problem so very um, educational so what we want to have or achieve is uh, to have it uh, running in Trisquil GNU, Debian or Ubuntu, variants of 64-bit low latency kernel, which gives us near real-time operating capabilities in, in many aspects. For example, audio very imp being very important in, uh, as in real-time, so if you want to install Jack or whatever, you really need a real-time op operating environment or near real-time kernel, which Linux is not doing really well, but it's getting there. It, so we believe in a couple of months it's going to be there anyway. Um, uh, our, our idea is to have a GPO, so general purpose input output, 16 or 19 pins, basically like Rasp Raspberry Pi has on its motherboard, but we want to move this out, also in the case, but out, so that you have it uh, cabling, uh, that, that you can pull it out of computer and connect stuff to it, so that you have a clean, clean GPO, uh, GPIO uh, physical hardware interface where you can uh, easily connect stuff to it. So. Um, Keyboard is QWERTY, it has a seven LED illuminated central uh, trackball, same like uh, ThinkPad uh, has a, a red nipple or a red track point as uh, people call it. Uh, for that we will use because it's also very cheap. Believe it or not, it's cheaper to buy a trackball with seven LEDs than trackball without any LED, which is kind of really strange, but that is how it is. Um, and it's clickable, it's positioned between GH and uh, above B key. So a little bit like ThinkPad has. Um, when we say design is different, it's, it's a kind of a mesh between OLPC, that's a little green computer that I keep there on the table so you can have a look and talk to me. Uh, if you have questions, ask, please. I'll explain you everything. I also participated in the development of that. Uh, uh, I left when they s decided to say, oh, we can port Windows on it and then it's even better. And I said, no, no, goodbye. Uh, so uh, that's another story. Mm, and a Panasonic Toughbook. So basically, what I see as a kind of a perfect uh, laptop would be mesh of these three, which gives you quite some processing power, innovative interface or physical interface, haptic feedback too. Um, and um, so it's like that. So we, we make CPU and RAM. Uh, we look in a multi-core uh, system on the module cards. Uh, and we develop some. Also, I ordered some that some people did already before. Um, there is a uh, Taiwanese initiative doing that, uh, there is an English initiative doing that, there is an American initiative doing that, and there is also a Japanese initiative doing that. But these people are quite young, I would say, also they don't have enough money or something, but they have some pretty good ideas, or at least they have some pretty good and clear ways of thinking about uh, design problems, basically, because this is more or less how do you solve problems in hardware, not really software at the moment. Um, anyway, um, our idea is uh, that you have a card that is exchangeable and upgradable. I think that's a, that's a good, a valid point to, as a feature. Uh, we understand RISC-V architecture as an idea vehicle for security community because it's a, it has a, a very uh, ISA or its um, um, architecture is uh, kind of designed and by default somehow there are some issues with side channel uh, attacks or whatnot, but uh, at the moment uh, this, is, uh, this is kept as, uh, as, uh, as uh, um, let's say uh, risk 5 is here to stay next 50 years and I believe that it's a new paradigm in thinking about the hardware and how, how you actually do stuff with it. I'm sure lots of people have heard and even have some RISC-V uh, chips at home, but they're mostly 32 bits. Uh, what we work on is a, a 64 and 128 bit uh, uh, idea how to design uh, uh, and how to use multi-core, meaning not only four or quad-core, which is kind of common now, but the octa-core and 16-core um, stuff. So that's it. Um, we also look, as I said before, into our Mali, Mali 400 architecture as a graphical Thing, but we also look in NVIDIA Jetson platform, which also comes with some sort of uh, funky uh, machine learning chip, which is uh, in its early stage. But still, it's also problems with all these companies. And I said before is that they have a quite close documentation and we are kind of working with certain departments of these companies in order to 
uh, uh, put soft pressure to, to, uh, to, 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 to decision makers to say, okay, we understand, we need really to open all this uh, uh, hardware to everybody, not to uh, f have five people in a house developing it and then pushing products, but we want to say, okay, this is a product, this is blueprint, this is how it works, and this is complete documentation for it, go and knock yourself out, right, please, best drivers you can, it's going to help our product. So this is complete new uh, way in, in creating this kind of uh, awareness in the management. So it's a kind of a hard, hard job, let's say. Maybe it sounds naive, but it's uh, basically happening. So uh, we also have a, a eSATA SSD, that's normal. Uh, however, uh, if you w we want to claim a security device, you say, I want to take my hard disk really with me for some reason on events like this or maybe bigger events where there are thousands of people. Maybe I don't trust somebody. So, or police comes or whoever comes to take your stuff from you, you should be able to take your hard disk very far, very fast out. So your data is with you and in your pocket, not on the chip and not only graphic, but your hard disk. So this is kind of a system that we come uh, up with it. Also, mind you, um, this computer or Balthazar as, as a kind of a new shift in paradigm of what laptop or how it can be uh, improved is that uh, has a screen and behind the screen is a motherboard. And basically batteries but below, battery and hard disks are the only things that are below keyboard. So, and the balance is achieved so that of course, we have a very tiny uh, electronics, very light, so that uh, it's, it's a very well balanced. Uh, it's also hot swappable, meaning that you can change a battery. It has a two batteries, one lasts for five minutes, and another one is 10,000 uh, 10, uh, 10, milliamperes, pretty powerful uh, 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 life, pol life cycle polymer uh, battery that is kind of long lasting uh, uh, and, and very durable and also very re recyclable. That's one thing. We also uh, have a fanless, meaning that we want to use, uh, one idea uh, in the early design was to use uh, Peltier pumps, uh, because Peltier pumps are working on a difference of materials. Basically, one material is getting cooled by the other material using some certain electricity, uh, small electric, electrical power, and other side is heating up. Um, so uh, also this Peltier pump can be also used to generate really kind of a modest energy to it. Uh, we kind of gave up on this idea, not entirely, but we are looking now in graf graf graphene uh, 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 materials to see how we can enable fast cooling. So that's, and that there is no fan, because less movable parts means more juice for your processing power. Um, so ever since uh, Commodore 64 or Amiga computers, uh, we kind of uh, forgot that it is really, that it should be very safe for an file system and a computer that basically you, when you say I want my computer off means off, means right now, not some temp memory writing to a disk. So we are working around it and also to boot up means I, I, I don't have time and uh, studies and in interface and in electronic design for children, uh, which we can also apply to grown ups or us, is that we simply have no time to wait longer than four seconds. So if my computer is not up in four seconds, at least to some sort of usable level, which is kind of a BIOS, usually boots within this time, so at least you get some interaction with, with the machine, uh, it's, it's kind of boring. So you have to wait, and that kind of, uh, it's, 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 it's a point where which we have to have uh, a thing. More importantly is a power and a sleep, we understand that once when you boot your computer, it's on and it's always on. So basically, when you when you hibernate or when you suspend, that has to write, that has to work really well. Uh, uh, with Linux, there were some issues with different platforms. Dell works like this, uh, um, IBM works like this, uh, Hewlett Packard works like this. So different computers, different. But we think that we can we can respect uh, 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 ACPI uh, specifications in a pretty much uh, thing. What we want to introduce is an on-glare screen. Basically, 1610 full HD resolution with two, more than 200 DPI's, meaning DPI's per inch, uh, dots per inch, which uh, uh, 10 years old uh, laptop, green one, um, has. Uh, it has also very high resolution for what it is, for, for its uh, uh, flimsy six inch uh, screen. Um, what we also want to do is to have a non-reflective, meaning that it's completely matte, as we find that really nice, plus, it has a, a, a back, backlight off, meaning that you basically don't need uh, uh, illumination from the back of your screen, but it kind of becomes kind of e-ink readable and uh, 
uh, alternates of red, green, and blue pixels or RGB pixels are basically uh, they uh, they they react on the sunlight in a such way that they become the red becomes red, blue becomes blue. So basically, you just lose the light backlight, and you can see it on the sunlight. You, I, I can show you that tomorrow or tonight if you want uh, to see how actually works with OLPC, and we find that uh, very good. Um, Detachable webcam, yes, there, there could be some discussions about is that really necessary or not. But our idea is to say webcam is something that people put uh, uh, um, tapes over it. Mm, is it possible to, to switch it on while you are not aware of it without turning a LED, a LED light on? Yes, it is. Uh, it has been done. It has been done by Israeli Secret Service many times, uh, so they can do it. So for, let's say, e extra paranoid, it's also good to take camera out, not only to have a hardware switch for it or lens cover, but um, because we also want to, jo to, to merge uh, two microphones with the camera so that you have a stereoscopic uh, following, which, which is also uh, introduced 10 years ago in uh, uh, OLPC as, as, as a kind of idea of tracking uh, and, and uh, setting up stereo balance in uh, uh, listening to it. So for us, that's very important, I think. Um, so we have this GPLO, we have a hot swap, we have modular power, we have a kind of a waterproofy keyboard because it's very hard to uh, to build a, a, a trackball uh, waterproof, but it should be it should it should survive a, a beer spilled over. Every computer does nowadays, so this one probably should be a little bit better in it. Uh, and we are working on it with a professional company that is basically building uh, industrial keyboards, and they like the idea and and a challenge how to achieve. Uh, uh, let's say 99% waterproof keyboard that um, that can sustain all kind of abuse, liquid, dust, and uh, whatnot. Um, so we have an idea of uh, multi-touch pad. Multi-touch pad is based above the screen, above the keyboard, um, because at the moment you have it always, and on possibly all computers you have it uh, below the keyboard. Uh, we found out 12 years ago eight years ago and five years ago in different schools that children actually like to have uh, things turned upside down than we, and they find it easier to draw with one finger and to click with, uh, uh, to click with another hand uh, on, on a keyboard, which is only possible if you have a, uh, a touchpad above your keyboard and not below. Uh, it, it's a different way of gr having a grip with it. Plus, um, it, as OLPC it has a vacuum style mode, basically it's a trackpad, but you can also use a stylus and draw with it. It's a, like a vacuum pad, becomes with the press of the button, software driven, and it works beautifully. Um, so that is kind of uh, uh, it. Uh, what we want to have, not as a selling point, because that's that that's that's not uh, it's not a commercial ad, but it's kind of uh, it should be convincing enough for everybody to say, okay, these are the hardware features and this is how uh, we want. We have additional adapter that we want to uh, open source it also. Everything is open source anyway, so and, and, and uh, available and it's going to be available. So basically you have a Lego power functions that's, uh, that's power functions that have a six uh, digital, uh, six digital uh, channel communication uh, to a Lego actuators and Lego sensors. And also have RJ12 Lego sh shifted um, uh, uh, connector, which is which is sm uh, telephone, normal telephone plug, but uh, three millimeters to the right, so that you don't plug it into telephone line. This was a security that Lego worked on it, and we have a male D sub port, so basically serial port and uh, VGA connector to it. So it's uh, it's the idea to have it as a modular add-on, um, and of course uh, we can supply with the uh, courtesy of Lego people uh, keychain for USB dongle, so you have a kind of magnetic uh, thing that you can stick whatever. That's just kind of sort of a gimmick. Mm. That's basically it. I would like just to end up with, uh, for example, you have a Pine, Pinebook Pro. That's a $100 computer that somebody from Taiwan uh, wanted to do. Uh, point is, uh, they offer two months guarantee, and with two months guarantee, you cannot sell things in Europe because we are protected by consumers' law that are two years. So you have to give two years guarantee. Why they did a 100, 100 euros magnesium alloy uh, uh, computer, which is not very powerful, which uh, has a basically mediocre quality, um, is because they didn't do the second check. So basically every third 
motherboard works as it should. So they didn't do a second uh, check pass. It's not Rojas uh, certified. So you cannot really offer it to schools because uh, electronic components within it. What I want to also say that our co what we want to uh, achieve is a Tempest uh, cabling. Tempest cabling is a special way of uh, Tempest effect is uh, listening or tapping into device into electromagnetic emissions out of device. So you can do that on a distance with the microphones or at a certain frequencies or also with the uh, FM uh, receivers. So you can tap into the frequency of chip and basically uh, listen to what chip is doing and reproduce it uh, at your home or in your listening station or a post, whatever. So it has been done throughout uh, 80s and 90s uh, by various embassies and people did, uh, even Egyptian embassy used uh, Tempest Effect to listen to Israelis and Americans did it to Russians, Russians did it to Chinese, so everybody was doing everything. So our idea was to say, okay, we can offer really specially braided because this is the way to circumvent this is how to, how to use a cabling, special way of cabling. How do you braid and protect the, the, the cable uh, carrying data uh, from being able to transmit uh, 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 and emit uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation around it. So, and it's uh, uh, at the moment uh, I have a cable at home that comes out uh, and it's far above any American or even Russian military specification. So, at the moment this is the top of the line. It's very expensive. Meter costs about 500 euros, but that's the guarantee. It's so well made that it's Swiss made. So it's so, so well made that I, I, you cannot even measure you, you cannot measure what's going on inside the cable. So that's uh, that is one of the points. Um, so these are three uh, these are three um, things that we would like to uh, that we put as the links. Of course, there are more initiatives. I know of let's say for if not all of them, but most of them. Uh, uh, I talk to the people who actually develop it, I, I write emails and we, we have a good correspondence, even good cooperation. One guy is making a laptop out of the wood, it costs 1500 euros, it's very cool what he does, he wants completely environmentally clean computer that has no echo, uh, very low echo footprint and uh, it's recyclable and whatnot, but that's, that's what he does and uh, this is uh, what we do. Um, at the moment, uh, this media wiki that we set up uh, uh, in a way as, as, as to supply, to, to sort of show people what, what we are doing on and working on is, uh, is, is going to be developed. So you can contact me, I can give you my email address, I'll be sitting tonight and being around. Um, we also have a certain, uh, 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 we accept new ideas of course, so if you have any please, you're welcome. Um, and this is where I would end. Thank you.